Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Unzan Chitta. Greetings all. I'm going to say some things in this talk that um, quite possibly will bring out the trolls. So many trolls possibly that you'll think you're living under a bridge in Norway. I'm one of those people that, that came to Buddhism and Zen as a convert. I didn't grow up in a Buddhist household in New Jersey. Um, and, you know, I went to 13 years worth of uh, parochial school even. Uh, in the fourth grade, one of the nuns said to my mother, he's going to make a great priest someday. Little did she know. Um, so the thing is that um, the, I mean, even after 13 years and, uh, you know, growing up before school and all that stuff, being taken to church and all that stuff, you'd think that I would be pretty well ingrained in that particular tra tradition. But as it turns out, it, it didn't feel right. It just uh, wasn't working for me, I guess you could say. So I, I started looking around uh, at other traditions and, um, you know, never really formally pra formally practiced any of them. Um, and then I, I started as a, what I like to call a book Buddhist, where I wasn't practicing per se, but I was reading lots of different texts and authors and uh, other writings and from a number of the different traditions that we have. And uh, perhaps this says something about me, Zen actually made the most sense. Uh, a lot of people would take exception to that statement about Zen making sense, but it just felt right to me. So I, I decided that um, I would start practicing it. I had faith that it was going to do something for me, that it was going to work somehow, and that I would diligently practice until I proved that either correct or incorrect. And I'm still practicing. So for whatever that's worth, uh, here I am. Uh, and lest we forget about the trolls, here is my gift to them. Two of my favorite books uh, in the Zen oeuvre are the Jin Jin Ming, which you've heard me mention any number of times, and the other one is abbreviated AFM. Now, Jin Jin Ming is quite often translated as faith mind inscription among other things but that's one of them and afm stands for awakening of faith in mahayana and they both have the word faith in the titles and what was your reaction as soon as I said the word faith as it relates to Buddhist practice in general? Did you kind of go, did you go down the Buddhism is, Buddhism is a philosophy, not a religion thing. We don't have a creator God. Ergo, there's no dogma and no faith and all those other little paths that people sometimes find themselves going down. Um, 
with these, a lot of the texts, um, we have the original Sanskrit version, which then gets translated into Chinese and sometimes numerous times. And sometimes the original Sanskrit version is lost. So it ends up translated back from Chinese into Sanskrit. And then from there, it goes to Korea and Japan and Vietnam and uh, everywhere else in Asia. And then it makes its way across the Pacific and gets translated into English. And um, one could probably fairly safely say that there have been some editorial decisions made along the way as to what an accurate translation is. Um, read D.T. Suzuki's translation of something and then read something that's been translated more recently and, and you'll see the difference even in a hundred years worth of English and how it changes. So you can well imagine that between Sanskrit and uh, classical Chinese to more modern Chinese to all these other religions that some of these words, you know, may have gotten changed up a little bit along the way. I'd like to think that the message of the Dharma is still contained in them, uh, even though, you know, they won't necessarily translate exactly like each other. Um, in some cases, uh, there are Sinophied versions of Chinese words that are, you know, brought into uh, a different language. And sometimes the Sanskrit um, still gets used. Um, gate, gate, paragate, parasamgate. You know, we don't say gone, gone, gone beyond, gone completely beyond, we use the Sanskrit, right? So, um, the uh, faith mind inscription is one thing, and that's, that's the one that starts off with uh, the great way is easy for those with no preferences, right? Big favorite of mine, uh, totally about getting rid of dualism. The other one, the AFM, Awakening of Faith in Mahayana, uh, a lot of people are going to go dualistic on that because not only because of the word faith, but because the word Mahayana is in the title, which a lot of people think of as dualistic and they think of it as um, elitist and that uh, somebody who figured out the word Mahayana decided that there was an inferior version of the, the path called Hinayana and so on and so forth. But in this case, and in most cases for me, I don't use Hinayana or Mahayana to refer to a specific tradition, right? It's not Tibetan versus Theravada. It's not Pure Land versus Shin. It's just like there's the greater way and then there's the lesser way. And as far as I'm concerned, you can practice Zen and be Hinayana about it. And again, the trolls are invited to chime in at, at all that. But when you translate Maha, means great, right? Yana is vehicle or way or a way to signify carrying any of those kinds of things. So it's like basically the great way, which is easy if you have no preferences. So there's um, a commentary that uh, one of my favorite uh, Korean Buddhist patriarchs 
uh, did on the awakening of faith. And uh, I'm going to read a little bit of it for you. Uh, this treatise causes people's faith to be awakened. Faith is a term which indicates being certain. Faith that the principle exists. What, what exists in, is faith in the greatness of the essence of suchness. Faith that practice can get results. Faith in the greatness of the attributes of suchness. Faith that when the practice does get results, there will be boundless merit. Faith in the function of suchness, because there is nothing that suchness does not do. If one can awaken to the three faiths, one can enter the world of the Buddha Dharma, produce all merits, and enter the great way. And when I read that commentary, it sounded like, oh, okay, that sounds kind of like what I was doing, you know, 40 some odd, I guess, years ago when I just basically tried it on that Buddhist practice would work, that I would work at it in order to make it work, and that there would be a payoff to all that practice and uh, it working. Um, another Korean favorite, and I know uh, of Melenthas as well, uh, Jung Yo Jung says in the mirror of San, there are three essentials to San meditation. First of all, you must be rooted in great faith. Secondly, one must have great determination, strong, inwardly di directed, ardent determination to practice. Third, thirdly, one must have great doubt. If one of these is missing, it is like a tripod vessel with one leg cut off. In the end, it will be of no use. Also, the mind-to-mind -mind transmission, which the World Honor One passed on at three different locations, is the essential teaching of the San School. Everything that the Buddha said during his life is the essential teaching of the doctrine. For this reason, it is said that San is the Buddha's mind and Kyo is the doctrine. And they're both of the Buddha's words and his teaching of the Dharma. So my point is that while we're sometimes worried about using a word like Hinayana or even enlightenment sometimes, that we're not practicing the great way. One of the things that we're supposed to have learned is basically not to be dualistic, not to have those preferences. We put all that stuff down. If it's a hang up, put it down. That's the practice. If you find yourself hung up on a word or the purported meaning of a word, look at that, analyze that. Say, what is this that's perturbed by this word? What is it about this word that perturbs me? And maybe not immediately, but at some point or another, put it down. You often hear that uh, the great way is beyond words. Um, Bodhidharma is famous for purportedly having said that, right? Although he did use words to say that, so it's a little bit ironic, paradoxical, very Zen-like. But as Bodhidharma and Sengsan, the third patriarch who wrote the Jinjin Ming and Ashvagosa of Awakening of Faith fame, and Hyo Jong and Wan Yo might say, 
have faith. Don't attach to words. All these words carry us to the same primary point. We use words to go beyond words.